Hey, I think of some, it, this is a, a great start in terms of the way that we want to go, but we're very ambitious about this. So if there are any entrepreneurs or innovators out there, we want to be hearing from you too. I'm going to listen to the, the presentations with interest and good luck, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Louise, for, for joining us. Um, you should know that uh, UNCCD and the Global Mechanism launched last year a program called Desatec Grey Greenwall Innovators. And some of the innovators speaking today are, uh, were part of this program and developed solutions uh, in partnership with uh, Israeli uh, companies to um, solve the most pressing issues in terms of land and drought and energy access to uh, in the Sahel and Grey Greenwall. Uh, we have a do we have any video? Yeah. So maybe we are going to start. Um, Malvina. So we have a next. So for UNCCD, uh, as you may know, UNCCD is a United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification. It is um, composed of more than 193 countries over the world, and we are supporting those countries in solving SDG 15.3. Uh, However, countries alone cannot do everything. We need private sector, we need innovators, investors to come on board and, solve and, f and offer solutions. That's why we are here today. And um, we are very happy to welcome our first innovator, Omar Sissé. The floor is yours. You have three minutes, and after Omar's presentation, you will have uh, you will have the opportunity to assess uh, his his project. Good luck, Omar. Oh. Hello, everyone. So my name is Omar Sisse uh, from Mauritania. All right. So. Uh, so Seedball project is actually, it's not a project, it's actually a participative project. We are actually, uh, we, are, we have a vision of a, a green vision, like more sustainable future. And this is a method where we are used like seed balls as uh, uh, it's uncoplistating, like where we use like seeds and, and mix it with soil and compost make it as a ball and when we throw it to the to the to the to the land and with the time it will be at the how to say it uh, at the sleeping mat uh, mode and when the rain comes it will start to grow so like let's imagine a world where all of us like we are participating in a in a green project where uh, community leaders can participate individuals can participate all the organization they can come and build a, like more sustainable p p future by using seed walls so seed walls it's simple uh, is design is design is actually versatility uh, project where all the uh, community leaders, as I can say, and also very simple. So what we use, we use like indigenous seeds, uh, like non-timber products. Especially in Mauritania, we use like non-timber product. Most of local women are focusing on non-timber product, so we use those seeds and also put them into uh, uh, how said the, the seed ball, and after that put them into different packages, and those communities they can throw it, and even individual, just like coming from A to B, just like you want to go from uh, like point A to B, you just boil like a, uh, or maybe 10 of seed balls on your way, you can just throw it, and when the rain comes, it will start to grow. It's simple. So we have been starting our prototype in the, in the, in the, in the rural area in Mauritania, uh, last year and it went well. So now the, the thing, the, the, the we have also working on how to use our germination proce process to be more faster because we have a process to make like the seeds more, f uh, to germinate more faster than, uh, than the usual normal seeds. So this project include like local women into the area because they collect seed for us and also at the same time uh, all the community and also individuals, even any organization will want to actually to uh, reduce their carbon uh, like, uh, like offset, they can just uh, boil the seeds and also throw to the land. And also it's very rich, it's very nutrient seed ball because it helps like uh, to regenerate the land and also when the rain comes directly, it starts to ger germinate. Yes, thank you.
Thank you, Omar. Thank you very much for this first innovation. So we have a poll uh, to, um, so you can uh, uh, tell us what you thought about this project. You can scan with your phone this QR code. It will lead to um, um, a Slido uh, web page where you will find several questions. So, up. Okay. Malvina, is the Slido on? Yes, it's on. Perfect. Good. So, what is the first question, please? Yeah. So the first question rates the innovativeness of this idea from one to five. So we leave you a few more seconds to answer. And then the second question is rate the usefulness of this innovation. And we have a smiley faces. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a few more seconds before the third question. And the last question is open question, and perhaps we can maybe spend like maybe one minute. Yeah. Are you interested to collaborate with this innovator? <laughs> Wonderful. Is there any, any feedback in the room before we go to our next speaker? Yeah, please, Louise. The mic. But for people online. Oh, for people online. Sorry, people online. Um, I'm interested in the business plan behind it. Technically, it sounds really cool. Can you tell me what your ambitions are with the program? Thank you. All right. Uh, it's actually, kind of, as I said, like it's a particip participative uh, program, uh, no, uh, project. Uh, uh, yes, okay. As I said, like it's a participative project, so we just uh, produce a lot of seed balls and put them in different, uh, like how to say it, in different packages. In different, also depend on how many packages, like just like as you, maybe you insist, or maybe any project, you just want like we uh, to f f f like bring you like maybe 50 kg of seed balls. You want to actually to bring uh, maybe you want to plant tree in certain area. So we will, we, is, we have actually different. We have four species, four different species of of, of tree of of seeds. So we just kind of like. Uh, provide you uh, the, the, how to say it, the, the seeds, and also you will be the one planting it. And also individuals, they can also buy it. And also when they, when they, when they uh, travel, they can just also throw. So it's just like, that's actually how we will make money. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, sure, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I'd be interested to know whether you also follow up um, to get an idea of survival rates of um, the trees that people are planting. Yeah, definitely. So we were actually, th the first thing, when we were doing the prototype, we were working on the survival, like the germination rate, because it was, in the beginning, it was very hard. So when we had like um, uh, a partnership with one organization, like how they can improve our seed to have more germination rate, more faster. So they brought it like into like 60 to 70 person. Well, like it's still, we are still actually processing it. So uh, it, as I said, we are in the prototype uh, phase. So yeah, we, we still need m more to actually to how to use like the germination rate to be more, because you can just throw the seed and it will stay there. So what we want like, because at the end we need to monitor and evaluate how actually the, where we throw the seed by using drone or by using any hand. So yeah, that's actually a thing. Yeah. Thanks. Any more questions from the floor? Okay, I think. Thank you very much, Omar. And uh, of course, we know that Mauritania has severe uh, desertification issues. So we need solutions that can provide at scale. Thank you very much for this, uh, for your presentation. Our next speaker is Mrs. Moliehi Mafantiri. Welcome.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for having me. My name is Mudema Fantiri. I come from Lesotho. Lesotho is a small landlocked country in Southern Africa. Uh, we are most unfortunately very heavily affected by climate change. So currently there's, there was a heat wave and now we're looking at very heavy rainfall. We also seem to be suffering quite heavily from soil erosion as well. You will see in the picture before I speak about my project uh, that we shot the campaign um, in an area that has been affected by soil erosion just to bring this, this topic to forth. So to speak more about my actual project, I am the co-founder of a sustainable home air brand called Baradi. Baradi means daughters in the Sasuta language. What we do is we work with female artisans to create rugs and throws made out of wool and mohair. These are handmade by our artisans. Everything is done locally and we export to sustainable marketplaces in the global north. When we talk about climate change, um, I know that the first thing that comes to mind is not usually the textile industry, but this is because the textile industry has been lucky to get away unscathed where their contributions to carbon, uh, carbon emissions is, is, is involved. Because we're looking at an industry that contributes you know, higher than the aviation and shipping industry to carbon emissions. And petrochemicals are in fact in every single thing that we wear. It's not a matter of fossil fuels are being used to produce energy. Fossil fuels are, we are wearing things made out of fossil fuels. And so our solution to what we see to be a very detrimental industry is to promote sustainable practices by using natural fibers, which would be the naturally sourced, the locally sourced wool and mohair in Lesotho. Lesotho is the leading exporter of mohair on the continent. And so we are very lucky to have noticed that it's possible to make, or rather to have a business model that is far more sustainable than your, your typical textile um, business would be. Because you see that the, the carbon emissions that are associated with textile industries are due to the lengthy supply chain. However, if we do everything locally, whereas we are collecting our wool and mohair from our farmers, and then our artisans are themselves weaving the wool and mohair into thread to create the products, and then we package them out of canvas, canvas made bags, again made locally. That is far more sustainable. Uh, additionally, our products are all inspired by Basotho cultures. So you would see on the right, the far right, a rug that has um, a black and white pattern. It's in fact inspired by the uh, initiation of uh, women, young women that they go through and they have to wear a beaded veil. Then we have the second big rug, which uh, indicates a mural art. I know Lesotho is not well known for mural art in Southern Africa. You'd more likely think about South Africa. However, the reason why I mention this is because not only are we trying to be more sustainable, we are trying to promote cultural continuity. A lot of these practices, a lot of our designs, and a lot of our artistic value is being lost over time as we become more and more modern. So this is something that we are very intentional to, to promote in our products, especially when we are sending them across the world. So this might bring me to the end of, our presentation, of my presentation. I just want to, again, uh, highlight that it's important for us to promote sustainable home air brands because the textile industry is very close to, to having its own reckoning because we need to com confront the issue that climate change is a, is a, is a, is a problem that's being uh, affected by multiple industries, not just one or two. Thank you. Oh, okay, last thing. Uh, you can find us on www.gironabaradi.com. It's in the corner there. And you can find me afterwards. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Mouliehi, for your pitch. And we go to the questions. So please take your phones again. Um, up. The QR code will appear on the screen, so you can scan it. And um, the first question, as uh, previously, Rate the innovativeness of this idea from one to five. Let's, we are giving you 15 seconds. Yeah. Actually, Lesotho is, um, is uh, dominated by um, large rangelands and grass um, uh, areas. And um, those areas are quite degraded. Mohair is coming from very cute Angora goats, if I am correct, Mulihi. And um, 
um, UNCCD is actually supporting uh, rangelands areas um, because in 2026, it will be the international year of rangelands and pastoralists. So Moliehi, we can only invite you to join us in our efforts with countries. And uh, because, as you said, um, we need more sustainable value chains and a better management of uh, um, animals, uh, herds, um, herds uh, in those uh, rangelands areas. And uh, your project is definitely a solution. Can we go to the next question? Let's go. Next question. Right, um, yeah, the usefulness of this innovation from one to five. Yeah. Few seconds. <laughs> Lesotho is also part of the new Great Green Wall Initiative in the Southern Africa that was announced uh, a few days ago by heads of states of Angola, uh, Eswatini, um, and Zimbabwe. And um, uh, as you may know, uh, this area is composed of 16 countries, which is a SADC uh, area, SADC region. And they want to achieve a lot um, by restoring several hundreds of millions of degraded lands um, altogether. Can we go to the next question? So actually, the next question, as you know now, uh, is open. Are you interested to collaborate with this innovator? If yes, please uh, provide your email address. Wonderful. Is there any questions in the room for Moliehi? <laughs> Louise, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, fantastic presentation. I'm sure I'd like a rug at some point. Um, question, uh, what kind of, uh, are you, how are you engaged with the animals? Are you working with the animals at all and with the herders at all? Or are you just, how are you sourcing the mohair? And again, how ambitious are you going to be with this business plan? <clears throat> Okay, um, I think I'll answer your second question first and then, then that way. Uh, so the plan, our business plan currently uh, is to scale up our business. So at, at this current stage, it's quite small, but we would really like to have our own workshop, which would allow us to have more weavers. So this primarily would also feed back into our goal of cultural continuity. Like I mentioned, this is a skill that is dying out. So if we can have our master weavers who are predominantly old teaching younger weavers, in our workshop, then we'd be able to not only perpetuate cultural continuity, but we could also produce more products, right? And uh, be able to have more impact. So how are we working with the, the animals? We don't unfortunately work with them directly. We deal with the, uh, the people who are selling the, the mohair and wool themselves. So uh, they have a, an arrangement with our weavers, uh, which allows them to get the wool and mohair at a different price. Thank and you so much. Yeah, another question? Any other questions? No. No? Perfect. Our next speaker is Usman Mohamed. Please, come on the stage. Good luck. Uh, thank you so much uh, for having me. Uh, our project is as simple as ABCD. We call it Bulbula. Bulbula in Hausa means water hole. And this is uh, uh, an irrigation pumping machine that was designed 100% uh, using 100% locally av available lo materials uh, with few of uh, the engines and uh, the solar panels being imported. And uh, so this system is uh, a game changer for the agricultural industry, especially restoration and also uh, putting farmers as climate resilient. Then we have uh, the product has uh, like an obitable price because so far from what we have during our marketing, we have uh, discovered that this product is the cheapest so far because of its uniqueness. And it's also solar powered autonomy. It doesn't need much of a uh, fossil fuel. It needs solar and uh, some battery systems. And it also 
uh, a farmer can just own it and go on its own. So it's, uh, it needs less monitoring. And also it's durable uh, because what we realize with this system is that it can, it can serve a farmland like uh, half a hectare to one hectare. Our first design, our first model was the first one uh, by the right, then the second model is the one handling. This was a farmer that bought, a pro that bought our product last uh, August. And uh, this system is scalable and also adaptable. A farmer can buy more than one machine, can own it in the different parts of his farmland. And uh, we have future ambitions for this very product. What we are trying to do in the future is to design uh, an AI system that can uh, use algorithms and sensors so that your farm can know if it is, uh, the water is enough or you need more water and the seeds are germinating or they are not and the rest. So as, as well as a mobile uh, application, you can, a farmer can know his data from his home without even coming to the farm. So to the best of my knowledge, this product is going to be a game changer in terms of improving livelihoods for those rural farmers and also mitigating poverty and also contribute towards climate uh, resiliency among rural smallholder farmers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Usman, for this uh, presentation. We'll go directly to the questions. Now you know how it works. You scan the QR code, and we go to the first question. Ray, the innovativeness of this idea. From one to five, so let's take a few seconds. Nigeria is one of the most populated, uh, is the most populated country in Africa. So, of course, food security is clearly an issue. And uh, so, uh, so Usman is uh, providing uh, a, an idea, a proposition to scale his solution and to, f to address uh, the needs. Nigeria is also touched by desertification and drought because of the result, as a result of land degradation and uh, it is part of the Great Green Union Initiative of the Sahel and Sahara, too. Should we go to the next question? Next question is, um, so, yeah. Up, um, raise the usefulness of this innovation from one to five. Let's take a few seconds. So people online can also join us uh, by um, using this uh, slido.com uh, link. And uh, the number is uh, 5648484. So you can have access uh, to the poll and uh, vote with us. Let's go to the next question. The last question is, are you interested um, to collaborate with this innovator? If yes. Please provide your email address. Wonderful. Is there any questions for Usman? <laughs> Go ahead. Louise. You're very inspired today. I Thank you so much. <laughs> for very difficult and asked lots of questions, sorry. Um, where are you manufacturing it? What capacity have you got to manufacture? And what's the kind of level of demand? What's the level of demand that you're seeing? Yeah, sorry. So we have uh, a workshop in Sokoto. Is the northwest uh, part of Sokoto State is uh, uh, part of the 11 desert proline states in Nigeria, and uh, mostly we produce smaller. Uh, number of these products based on demand from farmers. We have over 38 million farmers, smallholder farmers in Nigeria, but those that are really interested in irrigation are more than 10 million. So there are huge demands 
because we have been receiving calls from different parts of the country asking for these uh, products. So it's a very, it has a very marketable, it's a very marketable concept. And uh, once we get this scale off by operating, by producing much more of these products, we will have a uh, market penetration. Thank you. Any other questions? <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you very much, Usman, for this great idea. Our next and last speaker, but not the least, of course, Colette Benoudi from Chat. The floor is yours. Thank you. My name is Colette Benuji from uh, Lead Chat. Lead is a non-profit organization that specializes uh, in the field of rural development, um, land degradation, sure. And the Lead Chat prides itself as a platform for resilience and uh, literacy program and dissemination of good agricultural practice at the grassroots levels. So what we need to do with my partners uh, Innovation Africa and uh, another NGO in Chad is bringing people from Arid to Abundant project by announcing water project and uh, in rural area in Chad. Why? Because as you can see, uh, in Chad, 54% of the population um, lacks access of uh, water service, 1.5 million are in danger uh, of severe hungers. Uh, these conditions are uh, exacerbated by frequent droughts, insufficient rainfall, and limited water source. And sometimes we have too much water, like inundation. Chad is one of the sunnest country, but no energy efficient solution. So we need to do this uh, because we need really uh, to build smart, uh, energy smart communities in Chad. Yeah, and uh, so can we can improve agricultural produ production. We can uh, bring up income generation and uh, nutrition intact on the family level. Uh, on the social and environmental level, this project uh, can lead people to access to clean energy water uh, and uh, uh, we will bring a um, literacy program to access to climate information and other things, and the uh, light for literacy among women and uh, young adults. So the project will create jobs for local community workers and uh, project manager, in addition to staff, local contractors as hired to supply services, equipment for local vendors. So uh, this is uh, the synoptic of project we need to do, but I have uh, my whole presentation. And I'm frank in switching, <laughs> so <laughs> that is why, merci. <laughs> merci beaucoup, Colette, for votre um, pitch. Donc, uh, so uh, let's go to the last uh, poll for the first question. Um, again, rate the innovativeness of the idea from one to five. You have a few seconds. <laughs> Great. Second question. Rate the usefulness of this innovation from one to five. And for the last question, are you interested to collaborate with this innovator? If yes, please leave your email address. Access to basic drinking water services in Chad is quite low, 43%. And uh, access to sanitation is only 10%. Less than one in two children has access to water, drinkable water, drinking water in the country, uh, while only one in 10 has access to improved sanitation. So there is definitely a need for solutions, um, frugal innovations to be scaled up. 
Is there any questions for Colette? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Louise. Thank you. Hi, Colette. Um, I, I, I think I perhaps didn't quite understand what you're planning to do. Can the, the energy, I totally agree with you on the importance of access to energy, particularly in water environments and when you're restoring the land. If you restore the land, we grow more, but if we can't do anything with it, if we can't process it or we can't refrigerate it, meh, it gets a bit wasted, yeah? So can you talk me through what, what the actual plan is on the ground? What would I see on the ground to make the energy and water situation better? Can you just explain that to me? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to speak in French? Yes, yes. Okay. On the rural area, we want to make a transformation post-recolte for the women. Et ça, nous voulons le faire avec des équipements, euh, avec de l'énergie renouvelable. Nous voulons aussi faire euh, les cuisines euh, solaires. Nous avons pris des contacts avec les, le, le biodigesteur, euh, les fabricants des biodigesteurs qui étaient très intéressés pour nous livrer des biodigesteurs pour donner la fertilisation dans l'agriculture aux femmes. Et comme les femmes sont tellement occupées le matin, Nous voulons la lumière le soir parce que notre programme d'alphabétisation, après leur travail, 18h à 18h, nous voulons euh, implémenter ce programme d'alphabétisation pour les adultes, les femmes et les jeunes adultes. Donc voilà ce qui est nécessaire pour avoir l'énergie dans ces zones arides. Mm. You got it. Merci beaucoup, Colette, pour... Euh votre uh, intervention. Donc voilà, vous avez... Uh, sorry. So now you know our four innovators for today at COP28 on the Land and Drought Pavilion. They are from uh, Chad, Nigeria, Lesotho, Mauritania. And um, we will uh, discover who will discover the results of our poll. Yeah. Actually, we have some questions from the online audience, and maybe, Sarah, you can, um, I mean, I'm happy to ask um, uh, before we jump into the results. Um, so the question is to Omar, and the, the person wants to know, I would like to know more of what that seed ball is made up of. Oh, yeah, okay, thanks. So uh, the seed ball is made of compost, soil, and clay, uh, which we will be uh, like making as a ball, and we put the seed inside. So I don't know, maybe like we were just allowed to have one slide, but I have like lo more, more pictures for, for that one, which explain like, uh, uh, as you can see, this ball is actually made of clay, compost. Like we, 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 we actually recycle like food waste and make it as a compost and, and uh, put it. And also we put inside the, bo uh, the, the seeds. We can put two seeds, it depends on how like the large seed it, it is. And we put, and after that at the end, at the top, we put charcoal. So charcoal, sometimes we don't put charcoal, but like when we put charcoal, we, because it's just to avoid like insect and also and other animals to just, uh, you know, uh, to take it. So that's what we do. And uh, yes, so that's actually the main uh, stuff, we, the main actual nutri, nutri, rich nutriment we, we put inside, yeah. Thank you, and I know that we touched base on that, but I, maybe you wanna add something uh, on the business plan behind this innovation. All right, uh, so uh, as I said, like it's, it's a participative project, which everyone can participate in it. So uh, we include like people who are interested about how they can come and just buy those type of uh, uh, packages of seeds. And we be because we are planning maybe to expand, like uh, our st we, we are planning to, to operate like in the rural area where we just produce all the seeds and bring it to the, to the, to the capital city where people will buy the seed when they are going to the rural area, they can just, uh, uh, and also organization, approach organization, if they want to actually uh, they want to uh, restore land <coughs> by using seed balls. Especially for the com for the past few years, Mauritania we have been doing uh, like uh, we have been doing restoration by using seeds, just seeds, just with with the plane, just throwing seed. 
but like having that that uh, that component like soil and compost with it it actually uh, give more and people will be more interested about buying those packages and just to reduce their carbon footprint Thank you. Um, now the question to Usman. Are you connect with other young people who provide solar panel solutions? Uh, yeah, we do engage with young people, especially we have these voluntary activities in our own organization. Now we engage them actively through capacity building and also organize workshops that we bring them on board. So there are other opportunities that we engage youth to come in contact with uh, all these technologies and rest. Thank you. And the follow up where it is produced, where you have your, I guess, production happening. Is in Sokoto State in Northwestern Nigeria. Thank you. And the last question is to Malahi. Um, I would like to see this innovation, uh, how it can be used other than just art pieces. Um, can you please repeat the question? Yes. I would, I would have liked to see this innovation, how it can be used other than just art piece. Okay. They're not necessarily art pieces because they are homeware. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure how to answer the question. Perhaps maybe if you can provide like pra practical implementation of your product, maybe this will guide the, the question and the answer. Okay, okay. Uh, so um, currently our rugs and throws are sold uh, at sustainable marketplaces. And so then they can be used you know, for different functions in the home. Thank you. And I also have a comment. This is so important for women empowerment in Lashoto. Yes, it is. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So, Sarah, um, I think we are ready to announce the results. Mm -hmm. um, so please just give me one, two minutes. I just want to be sure that I have the latest version of it. And we will announce that. Actually, uh, if I may, uh, Maluna, I have the result. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for attending today. And um, today, the, the one who got the best right of uh, regarding innovation and usefulness was Omar. So, Omar Sissé, congratulations. <laughs> All of you are having great solutions to solve the most pressing issues uh, in your countries and in the world. Um, as part of UNCCD's uh, programs um, for innovation. You know we have the Desertec Great Green One Innovation Program, and um, we are continuously following your work and uh, trying to connect it to countries' uh, strategies and programs to transform your pilot innovations into scalable ones. Thank you so much for being there today. May I ask you? To tell us more about how EU is uh, acting in the field of innovation, Nicolas. Would you like to come on stage? Yeah, thank you. This is how it happens at COP. You see people in, in the crowd and then they get called on stage. Um, maybe just to quickly introduce myself, I'm Nicolas Gottman. I work for the European Commission, uh, which is the executive of the European Union. Um, and we're responsible, uh, among a lot of other things, for um, managing the, the European Union's aid budget. Um, so very much involved, obviously, in, in the conversation that we we're having today. And I just wanted to um, well, say to the four of you uh, that, first of all, I have a lot of respect that you are your own bosses. Um, because it can be quite simple to have a boss that tells you what to do. I think, you know, to wake up every morning and to to think about, you know, where we're going to take this project next, uh, what's needed, right? It, it requires a lot of energy to be that creative on a daily basis. So I just wanted to say I have a lot of respect for you, and um, I think what you're doing, all four of you, even though we went through a rating, um, I think each in each of the innovations that you have in their own right are, are fantastic. Um, so 
obviously the UNCCD is not uh, the only uh, institution that is thinking about how to best support you in these endeavors. So um, in our work collaborating also with the UNCCD, uh, specifically under the Great Green Wall, so um, that, well, at the moment um, is targeted specifically at the countries that Omar Osman and Coletta are from. Um, but, you know, the, the, the idea of the Great Green Wall is also coming to, to Sadek, Moeli. So um, we uh, are looking how to pool our resources also with uh, a lot of different actors um, that are coming in at a regional scale to basically uh, capitalize on the ideas that are happening on the ground. So um, under a new program that we have, which is called Knowledge for Great Green Wall Action, um, we're coming together specifically with um, the um, United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization and another organization called C4A Cruff, which is the Center for Forestry Research and World Agroforestry. Um, and we're looking specifically for ideas that can support the Great Green Wall now. You know that the Great Green Wall has become uh, somewhat of a green deal for the Sahel and the Horn of Africa. So it's not only limited to um, what Amar is doing, which is tree planting, but um, very much has also uh, expanded into every single solution that you presented today. Um, and there we're in the early stages to also see how we can best support that. So we will soon have uh, an innovation fund also running um, where we'll be in close conversation also obviously with Desert Tech from the UNCCD. Um, so just to yeah, also let you know that I think there is quite a lot of actors uh, regionally and globally um, that are there interested and supported. So even if there's a day sometimes where, I, I mean, I've... I've also, I've got friends that are entrepreneurs, and I know that sometimes it can be quite daunting to, you know, for a while not get the, the funding that you need to, to, to move to the next stage. But to, to just know that um, the money is to a certain extent there, I, I think, you know, it comes down to making the connections. And I think, in, well, an opportunity like COP is, is one of those. So I'm glad to have also um, witnessed your presentations. Um, I hope to take your contacts and yeah, back to you. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, thank you very much, Niklas Gottman from EU INPA for your intervention. That was indeed an impro impromptu uh, intervention. Thank you so much. May I ask you all to join for a photo, a group photo? and uh, invite you for our next event, which will be on um, yeah, yeah, yeah. the Youth for Land event will be on Friday um, from noon to 1.30. And you are all invited to join us online and on site. Thank you. So please.